by secular history outside of the Bible that Jesus lived. Yeah. Now you will say you'll say this. The Bible says Jesus lived. Ninety percent of the world don't believe the Bible. You understand that. Most of the world don't believe the Bible, and most quote Christians don't believe the Bible, or at least half of it. And how can they be Christians if they don't believe the Bible? Well, most most people well, how can you be a Christian and not obey it? That's a bigger question. Yeah. How you can know. somebody believe in believing in hell but not heaven? That's true. A lot of people because they don't believe the Bible is God's word in the first place, and they believe man wrote the Bible, and they pick and choose what they want to believe in the Bible. But my, my, as my, if I've said before, if there's one error in the Bible, it is not God's word. Then somebody else wrote. Okay. Now, so then, has has historians proven? The reliability that Jesus, as an historical character, lived. Yes. Josephus, a first century Jewish historian, wrote of Jesus and the Christians. So he, Annas, son of Annas the high priest, assembled the Sanhedrin of judges and brought before him the brother of Jesus who was called Christ, whose name was James, and some other, some one of his companions. And when he had formed an accusation against them, he delivered them to be stoned. That was a first century Jewish historian that was not a Christian. Number two, other Jewish rabbi rabbinical writings, including Rabbi Eliezer, and writing in the Talmud, talked about Jesus and his miracles. Surprisingly, to many atheists, they never denied that miracles took place, but attempts to explain them as results of evil. More information about Jesus in the Talmud can be found in Jesus in the Talmud. Another Cornelius uh, historian writes about Jesus and the first century Christians in his Annals, A-N-N-A-L-S, A History of the Roman Empire. So if you look at the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire, the, he, when he wrote about the Roman hip Empire, he included that in that time period, a man named Jesus lived. Chris, uh, Christians, Christ, from whom the name has its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our prosecutors, Pontius Pilate. That's what he wrote. Another Samaritan historian wrote in 52 AD, attempting to give natural explanations uh, for the earthquakes and darkness which occurred at the crucifixion of Christ. So here is this Sanhedrin historian that lived in 52 AD, knew the history that when Jesus was crucified on the cross, everything went dark. And an earthquake took place. I mean, that was recorded in natural history. The, the, uh, the, the Jerusalem the Journal reporter wrote... And documented it, and they have. They, you know, I, I went back to uh, study, and they still have fragments in in the uh, in institutions somewhere in, in in Israel of papers that Romans really wrote. Fragments, you know, we have fragments of manuscripts. They have fragments of actual copies of paper or of manuscripts that reporters wrote during that time and one historian wrote, let me explain to you what happened when an earthquake took place when they crucified this man named Jesus. And he certainly wasn't trying to prove the Bible right because the Bible wasn't even in, in, in Old Testament existence. And, and, when, when, and when he tells of the death of Socrates... And of Jesus, he writes this, What advantage did the Jews gain from executing their wise king? Nor did the wise king die for good. He lived on, he lived on in the teaching which he had given. So he put Jesus in the same field as Socrates and all the other philosophers, but he included Jesus with Socrates, and he said, why then, did they, why then did they kill Jesus, who was the Jews' wise king? 
Jesus is mentioned by uh, a first, first century historian, Lucian, L-U-C-I-N, of uh, Samaria, and, uh, and a couple other guys. So, scholars have made statements such as this, no secular, no serious secular has ventured to, to say that Jesus was a non-historical person. True, biblical, true scholars of history will not take the position that there did not exist historically a Jesus. The latest version of the Encyclopedia Britannica says in its discussion of the multi-extra-biblical witnesses, here's what they said, the independent, these independent accounts prove that in ancient times, even the opponents of Christianity never doubted the historical of Jesus, which was disputed for the first time and on inadequate grounds by several authors at the end of the 18th and the 19th century and at the beginning of the 21st century. Here is the Encyclopedia Britannica says, it says that it wasn't until the 18th century that there were some authors who came out to say that Jesus did not historically live. Now, let me say, you are every one of you probably have people and friends and neighbors. If you brought up Christianity, the first thing and you're gonna the first thing they're gonna say, we don't believe the Bible. Here's what I'm trying to say to you. I want to equip you with proof that says, hey, look, if I can prove to you that the Bible is true, will you listen to what the Bible says? Ah, uh, yeah, uh huh, they'll say, yeah, you just proved to me the Bible is true, and I may listen to it. Yeah, because most people don't want to listen to the Bible because they don't believe it's true. And if you know, and so I think that's so I think that's historical of Jesus. Now, I, so now next, as I may comment, is scientific evidence. As I've said before, recent scientific evidence is adding to the evidence supporting the reliability of biblical chronological of the scriptures. The study demonstrated the reliability of biblical records regarding, for instance, like the Egyptian plague and the demise of Jericho. You remember when you remember when the plague hit Egypt? You remember when Moses was there and, and all the plagues hit Egypt? And you remember when, when God destroyed Jericho? You remember they went around Jericho eighteen times and they blew the cornet, whatever, and and the walls fell and the walls fell. Is there any historical evidence that that truly really happened? Did anybody, do you think the Egyptians recorded what happened in those days? Now, wouldn't that be cool if, if the Egyptians that lived in that day, and they, were, they, they kept records. They had historians, and, the, and they, kept, they kept records of dreams. Becky got up this morning, and she says, I had a bad dream. What she would have done then was go to a, a, a dreamologist. She'd go to a dreamologist, and she would say to the dreamologist, this is a dream I had. And the dreamologist would record it today on tape on those that they would print it out. And they had, they had a library of people's dreams. So when Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he brought in his counselors, they went back to their library of dreams and they determined that if 15 people had this dream, the interpretation of it would be this, right? But they had a whole library on dreamology. Well, they came back with the wrong answer, right? Now, the interesting part of it, the next time he came, he had a dream, and he told, uh, he told his counselors, I want the dream, I want you to tell me what the dream is, and they say, well, tell me the dream, and I'll give you the interpretation. Well, the first time he gave me the dream, they couldn't come up with the interpretation. The second time he had a dream, he said, tell me the dream, they couldn't figure out the dream, and he said, I want the interpretation right now. 